now. I'm live now, am I? Cool, thanks. Hi everyone, how you doing? Happy Monday. Um, sorry, we've got Drew. Drew, no, we haven't got Drew. Sorry, we haven't got Drew mm -hmm. using his toy today. We've got Josh using Drew's toy today. Um, Drew's gone off on a, is it going? Yeah, how do I see the comments? So if you swipe one way, you should be able to see the comments. Swipe. Oh, okay. Got it? No, hold on. As long as you haven't stopped the video. Ah, there you go. There you go. Comments will got appear. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Josh is freaking out a little bit. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Drew's gone to see his girlfriend, Beth. Uh, they haven't seen each other since February time. So he's gone to meet her halfway. Um, she she lives Ponty Preedy Way. Ponty Preedy Way, I think it is. Don't ask but, me. So they've, got, they've gone a nice big long dog walk today. They, Drew's taken the dog. Beth's meeting him. So he asked Josh to stand in today so that he could go out. And uh, so Josh is, you've got Josh today. You've got Josh behind the camera. He's going to read the comments and all for you. So he's coming online. He's there. Anybody oh, saying hello? Tina, Carol, some other people online. I think Meg was online. Hi, guys. Marilyn Thompson's watching. Lovely. Hi, Marilyn. Fab. So, um, so you're going to have to bear with us a bit today, okay? Because Josh is new on the toy, all right? So he was having a bit of a free. Mm. I don't find the comments. <laughs> it's all good. Linda's all good. here as well. Hi, Linda. Um... So what are we going to do today? The shop's open. Yay! We opened up this morning, which was nice. We had quite a few people come in, which is good. Um, obviously, we're still doing phone orders and web orders as well, guys, okay? Um, so um, you can absolutely just still give us a call and we can post out to you. Um, but we are now open for people to come and say hello. So um, so do pop in if you want to. If you are safe to do so and you, want, you need anything, you can pop in now. We're open. Monday to Friday, 10 till 3, okay? So, um, so yeah, that's good. Did you all have a nice Sunday? What did you all get up to? Uh, we are halfway through the haul. We managed to get most of the painting done yesterday. The wallpaper and bits not been done yet, but all the painting's done. So I think that's, Phil's gone back up to London now. So, um, so yeah, I think that'll be next weekend now. <laughs> um, so yeah, it wasn't a very relaxing Sunday. Did lots, changed all the beds, cleaned the bathrooms, all sorts. So what did you all guys get up to? Did you get up to any sewing? Did you do anything nice? Did you go for a walk? No? So let me know, do let me know in the comments, okay? So we're gonna have a look today at quilting your isolation blocks. Um, <laughs> I went through them all yesterday. There's a lot of them. There's, we've done a lot of blocks, girls and guys, lots and lots of them. Um, so I thought I'd take you through quilting. I've just picked three out um, and sort of take you through how I would look at the block, how I would decide how I'm going to quilt it. Now, this is obviously if you're going to do quilt as you go, okay? If you're going to put all your blocks together and then sew it, you know, and quilt it as one, it's not going to be very relevant to you guys today. But if you're going to do quilt as you go, and we're going to, you're going to quilt all the blocks individually and then join them. This is what it's about today. So, anybody there? Anybody commenting, love? Well, uh, yeah, so Nikki says she's filled a skip with rubbish. Oh, bless you. <laughs> nice bowl, please. Ooh. Ray says, watching you on my phone at the allotment. Ah, oh, nice. Down. Oh, lovely. Oh, I, see, I kind of fancy an allotment, but I've really not got green fingers, and I don't think I've got the time for one. So, Josh would like it, wouldn't you? You'd kill a cactus. I, do ki I could kill a cactus. He's right. <laughs> oh, show. Oh, <laughs> I think Josh might like an allotment, but uh, yeah, no, it's not a good idea for me. <laughs> so, anyone else there? Yeah, so Tina's just said, made tie backs for gar garage curtains, some mass for friends, nice. then gardening and crochet. Oh, lots and lots, and that was a busy old day. Jenny Fab. Edwards says she was finished off binding, we talked about that earlier. Ah, lovely, cool, fabulous. Uh, right, okay, well, I'm glad you all had a nice Sunday. Sounds like they're all very productive, which is good, really good. So... Um, I'm going to start with going through some of the blocks and also um, how I look at the blocks and and I also use okay. lots. You right? Yeah, I'm trying to point at you, but it's not moving. Going the other way. There we go. There we go. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> right. It doesn't need to be on my hands all all the time, okay, darling. So uh, right, okay. just uh, you just want to zoom in when I'm actually showing them you something here, okay? Oh, it's like going back to the beginning with Drew when we were showing Drew. So. Um, I thought I would, I've taken three of the blocks, which are all slightly different, um, and I'd take you through how I would look at them, okay? So I thought I'd start with the very first one that you did, which was the um, 3D illusion one, because that was the number one that we did right back. 
God, we, well, we're coming up to our 100th live. I think it's been like the 12th or 15th of July will be our 100th, 100th one of these. I can't say that. How you choose to mark up your fabric is up to you. Now, I do use Frixon pens. I absolutely do. Sometimes if you're using very dark fabrics and you use a Frixon, you might get a little shadow. So if you've got a lot of dark fabrics, I wouldn't necessarily draw on them if they're really, really dark, okay? Um, but um, you can use washable pens. Absolutely, they're really good. They will mark up, they don't disappear. Um, you can mark up your quilting design and then you can just use like a, you know, a bit of damp kitchen roll, damp sponge and sponge it off, okay? Or you could use a chalk pencil. We've got like the, sil I've got some of the silver and white ones if you're using dark fabrics. But I do absolutely, and I've no I know a lot of people say you shouldn't do it, but I've never had a problem with the Frixon pens, particularly on light fabrics. I wouldn't necessarily do it on a dark fabric. Well, you can't see them any on a dark fabric. I'd use a, a chalk pen for that. So um, I thought that we'd start, I'd start with the, the illusion block that we did straight, first of all, okay? So for me, quilting, because quilting, you're stitching the layers, they kind of get squidged together. Quilting recesses a pattern. And I ho hopefully I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. So because the quilting bit is the stitching, it kind of squashes the fabric down. So therefore the bit that you're stitching will be slightly thinner and tends to recess and makes everything else around it pop out. So that's how I look at a block. Which bits do I want to be prominent? Which bits do I want to, you know, like with this illusion block. So I don't know if you can come in close to this, Joe. Yeah. So they can see the block. Mm. Okay, got it? Almost there. Yeah, we there we go. <laughs> so with this illusion block, for me, these dark bits here are su supposed to be sat like behind the frame and these corners, okay? So I would try and keep, for me, try if I'm not gonna do an all over design, if I'm not putting it on Daphne and I'm trying to enhance the blocks, I would, on this block, I would try and recess, so I would stitch in to the dark ones to kind of push them back a little bit. I'm hoping what I'm saying is making sense to you ladies. Tell me, you know, please do comment and Josh will read it out if it's not. So, on this block, I would almost certainly, I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna show you how to put a walking foot on as well for those who don't know. I would almost certainly shadow quilt. And what I mean by shadow quilt is stitch slightly away from the seam. So, I don't know Josh, if you can come yeah. in nice and close on this, you might need to lift and, lift and point. There you go, okay. So, like on this little piece here, okay i would put the edge of the foot against this seam so that i'm stitching and shadow or echo quilting into these little um triangles okay and what that'll do is push that back and i will we'll have a go at that in a moment okay so you can see what i'm talking about so i would probably do that on all of these okay so i would shadow quilt into all of these flying geese to kind of push that back a little bit You've then got a nice big piece here, so you could play with the pattern. So you could just echo those triangles and shadow quilt all the way around, but you could do it two or three times, okay? So you could do it a few times and make that really push that back, okay? The other thing that I would do on this block, and I would keep it quite simple, I wouldn't necessarily do lots of fancy stitching on this, is I would also stitch around the edge like that. I can use the red one on that. So again, I would echo quilt like round the edge like this, okay? Because again, it will push this bit back and make that pop out more. Now I'm hoping what I'm saying is, is making sense. So I would almost certainly do that all the way around as well. So with your quilting, you want to make sure really, it depends on the wadding you're using, but as a general rule, it's, it's at least a hands width, closed hands width part, okay? And when you're doing a small block, you're always gonna get that. If you were just doing straight line quilting on a big block, you know, and you were just going down like the lines, you might find that you need to put more quilting in. But when we're doing little blocks like this, um, it, you don't need to really worry too much, 
Okay. Marilyn says, why wouldn't you stitch in the ditch? You could stitch in the ditch, absolutely. Um, I'm not a massive fan of stitch in the ditch. That's purely personal preference. Lots of people do. The thing with stitch in the ditch is, unless you are incredibly careful and you get it right in. So, hang on, let me just grab a pin a second. So, so Josh, if you can just come in close. So, say if I was stitching in the ditch down here. If I'm getting that really, really, you have to make sure you get it right in the seam. Because if you even go like one, uh, you know, a little tiny bit over or a little bit tiny over like that, it's really obvious. With shadow quilting, because it's a definite line, if that definite line is a weeny bit wonky, it's a lot less obvious than if you can't see any stitches, can't see any stitches. Oh, there's one. Can't see any stitches. Just Hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying, guys. I think it's more forgiving shadow quilting. If you like stitch in the ditch, absolutely you can do that. Absolutely you can, you know, but I always think unless you get it really, really ac precise, I can't say the word accurate, precise, and you don't wobble, it's more obvious if you go make a mistake than if you do shadow quilting. Okay? Uh, Christine says she's been told that stitch in the ditch compromises the seam. It can do. If you've, now if you've sewn, um, if you, as long as you press your seams to, hang on, let me grab one. One of the reasons we always press to the dark side rather than open is that um, if you press open and then stitch in the ditch. So imagine this one was pressed. Hang on, I'm get my fingers in there. Um, I'm trying to find one. Oh, there we go, I found that one there. So imagine that seam there is pressed open, okay? And then I stitch in that ditch. The only thing really holding the quilt in to the, the wadding in the back in is the cotton because you're stitching through your stitches here okay and you've got no fabric underneath it so one of the reasons quilters tend to press to one side is if you if i now stitch in the ditch there you're at least stitching through this fabric okay um i don't mind stitching the ditch i do you do it sometimes it's just not a favorite method of mine i find it a bit dull i like to see some quilting and the whole point of stitching the ditch is you don't see any quilting okay so hopefully that answered that question any other questions there josh not right, right now no okay so with this one this the first one we did i'd keep it quite simple i wouldn't necessarily mess around with this block too much you could do if you wanted to but it's quite an effective block with the piece in so uh, for me the quilting just wants to enhance it it doesn't need to mess with it Remember, this is all just my opinion. This is all just how I see the blocks, okay? You might decide, actually, I want to do all decorative stitches in here or I want to do lines of decorative stitches around that frame. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. This is just how, how I look at a block, okay? So I'm going to do some quilting in a minute on the machine. I'm going to show you to put the walking foot on, but I just thought I'd take you through um, <coughs> some of the blocks. So this one, that was, this was, what was this one? The bento block. Sorry, excuse me, I'm just going to grab my drink because I'm <coughs> a bit coffee today. So this was the bento box um, block. And with this one, I might play around a little bit with this one because it's not particularly supposed to be an illusion or anything. It's not particularly supposed to, um, you know, like with this one, you, know, you you want that to look like it's folded over and everything. It's just a pretty pattern. So I would look at this one and think, right, okay, what kind of feel do I want about this one? This one is very angular, okay, for, to me. So again, I would, I probably wouldn't touch the colour on this one. I think I would probably play with this background fabric, okay. I would, I think on this one, I would probably shadow or echo quilt round there hopefully you can see this so josh if you want to come close on this yeah. love okay so i'd kind of probably echo quilt which again i'll show you round there to emphasize these okay and i probably do the same this side i also think mirror in the quilt in so if you do something one side of a block it looks nice if you do it on the other side okay so i would probably do two maybe three lines of quilting which i'll again i'll show you in a moment like that and I think I would probably echo that in this one. So one, two, three. And again, there, one, two, and three. Okay, so I've kind of got, because this is echoing in this, I've got the quilt in echoing that. Okay. And 
with this one here with these little blocks in the center i might what might i do what might i do i might go right the way across okay jane says would you con contrasting thread um that again that's personal preference i'm not a fan of it it's um for me i don't like the quilt the thread to fight with the colors in the block but again it is completely personal preference if you're going to use decorative stitches and things you might absolutely i think actually i've got decorative little boats on this one so you know i might decide that i'm actually going to do a little line of boats or something with a decorative stitch i would probably then pick one of the colors in the block and maybe do a line of you know if i'm going to shadow quilt like that i might decide that actually this last little one is going to be you know boats or something or one of my decorative stitches and i would absolutely use a colored thread then um i'm i prefer my quilting to be but again it really is just personal i prefer my quilting to be blended in a little bit more um i would almost certainly just use a pale pale gray or cream on these and then now and then pick up maybe a navy or a duck eggy blue to do a little bit of decorative stitching okay um it's it's what it's what you want from the block it's what you want from um from the look of it um what i'll do is i'll grab some quilts in a minute and show you show you the difference in in using dark threads um dark uh sort of cottons against light and vice versa okay so i like i said i will i will do some stitching on these in a moment just so you can show i'll show you how i how i would do it but yeah, with this one, again, I would probably, because this is echoed with this, the pattern, I would probably echo the quilt in with the pattern mm -hmm. there, okay? And then maybe do maybe do some nice cross hatching or something in there, okay? And like I said, I might even use the boats as a little decorative stitch just in that one, because it would look, it would follow this here, okay? Hopefully, are you all with me still, girls and guys? Everybody still there? Any comments? Or are they all... No, just James' just last missing? one. Okay. <clears throat> right, so this one, this was the Dresden. You remember I said that I'd done these too big, so I thought I'd put them, rather than do them in a circle, I'd do them as two halves. You'll notice as well, I haven't squared any of this up yet. I don't square anything up until I've done the quilting. Because obviously, as we were saying, if you watched us on Saturday, we were saying when you quilt, everything gets sucked up a little bit. Every, you know, because you're squishing um fabric wadding fabric together and you're squishing it all together um yeah just come this way a little bit love there we go <laughs> so yeah completely different angle drew always sits opposite me i'm like hi oh. <laughs> it's fine it's fine <laughs> i should get used to different angles i was i went, immediately went to look there um because you're squishing the fabric together with all that stitching obviously the wadding and the, the fabric gets sucked up a little bit so I wouldn't square anything up until I'd quilted it, okay? If you're not going to do quilts you go and you're going to do it as one big quilt top, absolutely square these up and then join them together and then you would base the whole thing. But if you're going to do quilts you go, I would do it after you've quilted. So with this one, I thought I might play around and do something different with it because this is a big blank space. So this is an ideal place to put some quilt in. And I thought I'd show you how I would draw something out using stuff around the house. Okay, so you might want to come a bit closer for this, Josh, so people can see closer. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to use a, the water soluble one because it's a really nice, strong colour, and you'll be able to hopefully see this. So what I thought I'm going to do with this, I'm going to start with a big diagonal line down the centre because I'm going to try and mirror either side. Now. I absolutely play with things like cups and plates and all sorts, okay? You don't necessarily need quilting templates. I absolutely will play around with shapes that I've got, you know, things in, things within the house, okay? So I might start by having a, a bit of a serpentine line. So I'm just using the edge of a plate like that and then maybe turning it that way. Jenny mm -hmm. says she has some squared up and others she hasn't. Will that make how much difference will that make? Um, just the ones you've already squared up, I wouldn't heavily quilt them, love. Okay, just go with simple quilting on them and you should get away with it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by giving myself a bit of a serpentine line. And I do freehand into it as well, but why not use use what you've got to hand? Okay. And then um 
I might try and do like a lotus flower. So if I find kind of find the center, now you can find lots and lots of um, different ways of doing this. Lots of things online. You know, I'm just having a having a play, and I absolutely draw into my fabrics before I start stitching them. Okay, so if I was going to do a lotus flower, I've just marked opposite points and used a cup to get a petal shape. Okay, and then I'm going to mark another point there another point there you can measure the points but I really I just do it by eye okay so let's just I just use the edge of a cup it could be whatever you like it could be a glass it could be anything okay but this is a nice big um, area to put some some real quilting into okay so I'm gonna make another mark there and another mark there and we'll have another another little petal going on can you see I'm, I'm building this up you know it doesn't have to be this design it could be any design at all okay I'm just I thought well these are kind of floral let's play with a bit of a floral design all right okay like that and then I might think right okay well I don't want to I don't want to keep going with that pattern um, I might just actually I might do one more so I'd measure maybe half an inch up like that and like that okay and then I can just get a last petal in there so I'm trying to do this normally I'd turn it but I'm trying to do it so you guys can see here we go a bit of a petal like that but I absolutely use things I've got around the house I'll see that one's gone a bit skew with because I wasn't uh... there we go like that okay so you can draw all sorts of designs I might then cross hatch the rest of this so if I um hang on, let me turn it this way so if I went it maybe quarter of an inch lines behind like that and then quarter an inch from there okay and quarter inch from there and you can you don't need to free motion this you can absolutely draw any design you want out onto your fabric and use your walking foot okay so I might do something like that in these. So I would stitch, I'd probably stitch down that long line and then I would stitch my serpentine line and then, which I will do, for, I'll do something for you in a moment. I might decide actually that I want, um, let me get the half inch line, there we go. I want to just give a bit more quilting so I might come to that line across like that, maybe double it. So I look at, I mean, this is basically a blank canvas. I could do whatever I like on this one because I've got such a big space. I would almost certainly go up and down this as well, okay, just to highlight those. Um, but don't be scared of, you know, drawing into your blocks because if I don't like this, I can just go and wash this off. You know, this is a water soluble or if you've used Frixon, you can just iron it off okay but I might do something like that in that big space like you've got a lot of space to play with there okay and I would almost certainly go round those two to make those pop out a little bit more but you've got a, a big space to play with the quilting okay everybody all right so far any questions or anything uh, no Vanessa says thanks for the session it's really interesting yeah um that's all right Ple my pleasure um you get quite a lot of on like on the front of um free magazines and stuff you get lots of applique you very often you get like template plastic mm. um ones you can also buy quilt oh you're right love yeah. <laughs> you can also buy quilting stencils and things which you could absolutely on here and just draw out onto and you can hand stitch them or you could do them on the machine okay so there's lots and lots of ways of actually deciding what your pattern's going to be um you know i will do some very very simple i might do some that are a little bit more complicated um, just before we start stitching i'm going to show you a quilt actually josh that quilt is on the top there can you yep. just pass it over to me thank you so this was done, and this is one of the joys of quilts you go. And you've seen, you guys have seen this block, this quilt before. I'm sure I've shown you this before. Okay, so with something like that block, which I didn't particularly enjoy that block. I always think it looks like a bird, like an angry bird or something flying. It's his beak. You just need some black eyes and it would be a bird. 
So with something like that, I've, I don't know if you can get really close up on this, Josh. Yep. Okay. All I've done is, this is what I mean by echo quilting or shadow quilting. I just put the edge of the foot right against that fabric and then it's stitched round. Okay. And I just echoed the shape of the block with the quilting. Okay. And then in the centre, I just, again, shadow quilted round and round and round just to give some detail there. On, um, let me see. Uh, let me show you a different one on this one see I quite like a lotus flower I did exactly what I did there with a cup and because I had this nice shape here within the block I wanted to do a bit of a design in there all of this was done with a walking foot okay this was just straight line stitching this is not um, free motion or anything okay um, here I wanted to kind of give that I kind of felt it was a bit art deco-y with the flower in an arch so I did some diagonal lines from this point out I literally just drew my I don't think I even drew the lines I think I just went along and I tracked back and right this is gonna be really hard to see but I'm hoping you'll you can see it so I didn't go from there to there and break my thread okay because then you've got all those ends to sew in so I started here I went along can you see it? hopefully you can see that I'm gonna just color the stitches slightly so I started here went up I tracked along the seam went back down, back up, tracked along the seam and back down, okay? It's a lot less hassle with all you sewing together. So you can absolutely do, if you've got a big space like that, you could think about what you'd like to fill it with, okay? Don't just think that walk, walking foot is, is straight lines only. Um, something like this one, okay? I went really a little bit, you know, just curve happy, okay? And I didn't mind that they weren't evenly spaced and I didn't mind that it went a little bit wonky in places. But this was so large and busy, I just wanted to fill this white up. So a bit like matchstick quilting, when you just go backwards, forwards, backwards and forwards with no real plan. I literally put the edge of the foot there and came round, tracked, came round, tracked and round and round and round and just filled that space in each of those. Okay, um, let me see if I can find one that's got a little bit more complicated on it. This one, well, this one's actually a really simple one. I I thought the block was quite busy on this one. Okay, it's a really busy block. Lots and lots going on. So therefore, I don't want to detract from the the quilt uh, from the from the piece in. So I literally just went. I went round. I did in the ditch, round there. I did one, two lines actually. You can see one in the peach, one in there. Two simple lines there, and I went in the ditch round there. I didn't want that was quite a busy block for me so I didn't want there to be lots of quilting to mess up the busyness if that makes sense um, I'm trying to find one another one that that one actually that one okay again this one had a lot of white in it so that white I decided that I wanted the quilt yeah I could do some extra quilting okay so because these were curves I want to um, accentuate that shape with the quilting and I want to sort of complement it so I've come down and followed the curves but I've also again I just used a mug I think it's probably a cut one of those like that yeah okay to draw a line up and round and then again okay and I've done that because again those curves and those shapes echo the shapes in the in the piece in so I'm hoping <laughs> that will help a little bit for you to look at your blocks and think Right, so look, if we just go to the next one, look at the blocks and think, okay, what can I do with that? What what do I need to accentuate? What what do I want to recess? Ooh, let me sort that block out. I've got a big big bit in there. Um let's not <laughs> let's not do that one. Let's do um there we go. Something like that. Yeah, okay, something like the flying geese one, that circle of geese we did. Okay. Really, it's about that circle. Okay. So you could you could maybe just quilt a circle here <coughs> with a couple of smaller ones in or you could go around each of the um the geese each of those geese round okay you could decide actually you quite can okay, i don't know how you can see that actually that background piece there how it's gone together makes a really interesting <coughs> oh excuse me any comments there while I'm coughing my guts up? 
yeah, can I scroll through these? Or? Yeah, yeah, you should be able to scroll up and down through them. Ah, sweet. So Jenny says she was always scared to draw out the lines before, she, but she's definitely going to do it now. Ooh. This makes it far better. Uh, Absolutely, go for it. Linda says is, um, she's got a few stencils she hasn't used <coughs> yet. And yeah, quilting stencils are perfect for things like this. Absolutely. Um, anybody else there? Uh, not really. No. Linda says it's very effective, like the way the lines are drawn and what they yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, don't be scared of drawing it out. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm just an amazing free motion quilter and I can do all the lines. It really doesn't. You know, draw it out, plan it out a little bit. You know, I wouldn't draw it and get rid of it, draw it, get rid of it. You know, you know have a little bit of a plan. If necessary, get a piece of paper, the same sort of size, and have a sketch and a play and think, oh, actually, I, I could do this and this and this and this on it. Okay, decide what you what you think. But like this one, you know, you could there's nothing stopping you doing an all over one on it. Okay. So yeah. Um, um something like you see something like that one, something like the uh, the Greek key or the snail snail block that we did. <coughs> I would do nothing more than probably follow the lines. Okay? I wouldn't complicate that. I would literally just probably in my background I'd probably go either side like that and I would follow my lines. Drew's watching now. Is he? <laughs> oh Drew, is, is, what's Josh's camera like? work like Drew? <laughs> okay. Caroline says that she never would have thought about drawing lines on the quilt. Yeah absolutely you know you don't have to you know don't have to worry about doing that as long as you you know don't use a sharpie <laughs> you know something that's going to be removable or um you know a tailor's chalk or something like that um i wouldn't if you're going to use a vanishing pen make sure you quilt straight away because i've made that mistake thinking it would last at least 24 hours i drew out two or three blocks and then came back about an hour later to start quilting them and it had already vanished so all my work had gone um, but the the water soluble ones, if you're if you're not if you're worried at all about using Frixon, because <clears throat> I would absolutely use Frixon on light colours, right on the right side of my fabric, and I've had never had any problems. I know people say that it comes back in extreme cold and everything, but we don't live in Iceland. We don't live in Alaska. If you're going to if you were going to put it in a plane, if you're posting it abroad and it was being flown there, they can reappear. Okay, so um, I wouldn't use them. I use them all the time, all, all the time on the back of fabrics. Lots and lots and lots. Taylor's chalk or white erasable, I, you're, you're perfectly safe. Water erasable, you're perfectly safe to use. And actually on white fa on light fabrics, I would definitely use this. I have a cake on just one occasion in many years, found that um, it left a white line. And I know Carrie did as well. She did a, she did a cushion. And she had a very dark background fabric and she drew that drew it out with the fricks on and it did leave a slight white line i think it comes out when you wash it but um but yeah i would absolutely like that one really really keep it simple okay ones like you know like the bobbin block that we did okay um <clears throat> i would probably i might i might um, you know you could match stick quilt across so it almost looks like thread does everybody know what i mean by match stick quilting it's um, a bit like we've shown along the curves, but you literally just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, quite close together, but you don't worry about it if it's slightly wonky or anything. Imagine if you dropped a box of match matches out and they kind of all did that, you know, and went on top of each other, okay? But you could do lots and lots of little lines in that one to make it look like thread, you know, and then maybe, again, go around some of them. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cough today. Uh. Um, so we've got okay. a couple of comments. Jenny says she's used yellow on a dark fabric before and you can see it after it's been ironed, so tailored chalk would be better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jane says, how long can you leave the pen mark before washing it off? Ooh, that's water my face. Pardon? I just swapped it to my face. Oh, yeah. Hi, Josh. <laughs> Are you going back now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, water erasable will stay there until you wash it off. Okay? It's basically, it will stay there until you wash it off. The air erasable ones, the vanishing ones, they say 24 hours, but sometimes they go much, much quicker. If it's a really hot day, they will go a lot, lot quicker. Okay, so I would literally, if you're using a vanishing marker, I would draw it and stitch it. Um, the water erasables, you could leave them six months if you wanted to. Okay, and they'd be fine. 
Oh, they, everyone's saying hello to you now, are they? Yeah, Jenny they're... just said hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, something like this one. Okay, again, I've got quite a lot of background space there I could play with. So I might do just something really simple and just frame frame these, but then do something, you know, um, this was the dove in, dove in the window block, wasn't it? So <clears throat> you might be that you've got some little applique templates or something or little shapes or something you know why not draw around one and maybe put a, a bird or something shape in them okay entirely up to you i'm hoping this is giving you ideas that was the point of today was to give you some ideas and stuff so we're going to do some quilting all right um i'm going to take this over to the machine and i know most of you will be absolutely fine with walking foot but i thought i'd put the walking foot on for you so that you can um see so josh we're moving this way okay yep. so <coughs> just no you just want to just want to go up you want to up yeah, yeah just just fully up so that they can see okay right walking feet okay most of them look like this sometimes they've got just like a silver bar rather than a little one like this if you've got one of the silver bars it just sits on top of your needle bar this one will actually clamp round my needle bar okay so you need to take the full elbow off and i'm sorry if i'm teaching you guys to suck eggs today with this um but i just thought it's worth if you haven't used a walking foot yet and you're a relatively newbie so you want to unscrew this a little bit and fit that round and you want to make sure that the little lobster claw or the little crab claw is round i don't know if you can come close a minute yeah. josh is round the needle bar which is this one here okay so that bit there is going to go over that okay so that's going to go in like that and make sure that is there we go on hopefully you can see that guys so when we're quilting again this is the first time this one's gone on so uh let me just make sure i've got it on right there we go okay make sure i hang on to that elbow i don't lose it <laughs> i've been that's been on button okay check it out back in there so when you're quilting um i will use i i don't think this uh, you can buy machine quilting threads and stuff which are beautiful you get some lovely colors and cottons and all out there um i quite like orophil for for quilting but some machines don't like it she this one tends to so far touch wood it's been fine with orophil um you can use your moon threads whatever you like okay um you don't have to be to this no quilt please if you like the look of it use it okay um with regards to stitch length because we're stitching through layers i would suggest going up to at least three and a half three and a half to four on your stitch length okay which would just allow the machine to move nicer through the through the quilting you right, josh yeah jenny says not using your table as a question i'm not sure oh, what that means. Um, it hasn't come out the box yet love so my this machine comes with a quilting table um yes absolutely i it hasn't come out the box yet love i haven't had a chance uh, i haven't haven't needed to use it because i'm only quilting this much okay at the moment i haven't done anything big on it yet so i haven't used the table you don't actually need your quilting table because that is actually because this is a this is a good this is a big machine anyway i could absolutely put my quilting table on though if you want to go for it okay so with this one normally with quilting i would say start start in the middle and work your way out okay um that's whether you're doing a big quilt or whether you're doing a block all right so if i'm going to do something within the center of this i would do the center before i do the outsides the reason we do that is if i went right around that edge first okay and it started to su sort of suck in a little bit i then can't smooth it out okay so i'm going to do the center first and because i've just spray basted if i've got a little puck or anything it means that i can just undo it and spray it yeah you know, and push it push push that pucker out okay um if if i'd have done those edges first and it puckered here in the middle i can't i can't then push out hopefully that that makes sense okay um the other thing i would suggest as well so i'm just going to echo quilt round the just round the corner all right just just round the square sorry is bringing your bobbin thread to the top okay you do this quite a lot so go put drop your needle in drop it back out do it properly drop your needle in drop it back out and pull up that bobbin thread okay on a lot of machines 
if you leave the bobbin thread under, underneath and you start quilting it gets all tied up it gets all like knotted up and you get a horrible little like knot at the start of your, your line which is a pain to unpick so I do find that if I just do that so that they're both on the top a you've got them both on the top for for um what's the word stitching in for sewing in but also you don't get those little nasty little um oh knots why can't I think of the word knots today <laughs> good grief so I'm literally gonna I've got the edge of my walking foot right on the edge I don't know if you can come a bit closer yeah. Josh so people can see so I've got the if you come through here yeah there we go okay so I've got the edge of my foot right on the edge of that seam okay and I've got my needle just set in my central position if you want that gap to be smaller with your echo quilting just move your needle over or choose a different point on your walking foot but this is fine for this one okay so I've brought my bobbin thread out if I got that walking foot on properly I hope so so right, it's the first time I've used it so you'll see in this one first. oh no something's not right that walking foot what's not right okay lift it oh mm, yeah no that's not right okay so haven't used this before yeah. oh yeah look look what's happened Summit is de most definitely not right with the walking foot. So let's just whip all that out. Uh, Linda says she's got loads of good tips today. Learn good. something new every day with good, us. Good, good. Fabulous. Right, okay, what's, what's wrong with the walking foot? So that's over there like that. Hmm, how bizarre. I don't know. Okay, maybe we're, maybe we're not doing any quilting. So brand new, I've literally only just taken it out of the box because I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So I'm not sure why that's playing it. Let's just try one more time. Yeah, that's not walking, is it? Why is that not walking? So Jenny said, yeah, it was quite noisy. Something sounds off. Yeah, something that definitely sounds off, love. Right, re-thread bottom, re-thread the top. Always the first places to start. Liz says, lower the feed dogs. Not with walking foot, love. No, not with the walking foot. Only when you're free motioning would you, the whole point of a walking foot, foot is it works with the feed dogs. It's designed to work, the feed dogs are pulling the fabric one way, your walking foot is pulling it the same feet, at the same speed. So yeah, if you're using a walking foot, you don't drop the feed dogs. It's only with um, a, a standard, you know, a free motion foot. Okay. Typical. <clears throat> Let's just try this again. Make sure that this is on correctly. Right. Just make sure. Or have I got a broken walking foot? You never know. Right. While well, I'm fiddling with this, doing a little bit of uh, sewing machine maintenance. <laughs> Anybody there? Anybody having a having a chat? Uh, Vanessa says I uh, one always wondered why she had a knot on the underside, but she's going to try the um bring the bobbin thread through it's working properly yeah always bring that bring that bobbin thread through it just it just helps okay let's we'll just try again on this jackie says is a plastic hook attached to the other side yeah I've, I've got the plastic hook over the needle bar which it's supposed to be don't know let's uh ooh, let's just try one more time and then if not i'm afraid i'm gonna have to actually abandon the quilting bit but it's a case, it'll be a case of a, <laughs> have a go rather than watch what I'm doing. Okay. Right, let's try that again. As I say, it is brand, brand new, so it should be absolutely fine. If it's not, I'm going to have to have a little chat with brother. Sandra says, you shouldn't pull the top thread through. There's a small spring that can break. You shouldn't pull the top thread through? Yeah, there's a small spring that can break. Let's pull the top thread through from where? What, from the... Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're what you're talking about, lovely. There. Right. So there's my bobbin thread up, and then pull it down, needle down. Let's try again. Here we go. That's sounding better. Let me just check the back. There we go. 
that's fine now right so all i'm doing is just using the uh, edge of my foot see 90 percent of the time most problems can be solved by re-threading your machine okay so i'm just going to go i'm using the edge of the foot against the edge of this piece here making sure that the needle goes down before i turn okay like that and round. now if i was going to do lots of um maybe lines within here i would then use my next line of stitching as my guide rather than the edge of the foot it is a lot noisier a, a walking foot than because it's um what's the word it's it's wa walking that's the whole point of it it's walking along with the feed dogs Okay, so I've just realised what the time is, guys, so I'm going to have to get going in a minute. So I know we talked a lot rather than any stitch in there, but hopefully it was more about the ideas. So you can see I've all I've done is just draw, is just stitch all the way around there using the edge of this line here. And if I wanted to do another line, I would use the line I've just stitched. So I'd put the edge of the foot on the line that I've just stitched and stitch another one in and then use that again to stitch another one. And you can see, obviously, it's gone through to the back that's all stitched nicely now <laughs> instead of that nasty mess or whatever that was okay but that's obviously where i've just cut my threads okay but by bringing that th th thread through oh my god i can't say that bringing the thread through <laughs> to the front i didn't get a little knot on the back okay and then i can just use an easy thread needle and bury those ends okay so any questions comments anything i can go through again with anybody um anything there that i can help with uh so vanessa says love the fabric which one is it that was um oh this was a uh janet claire it was called origami this pattern these these fabrics um we haven't got any i'm afraid um i bought it as a fat quarter bundle about two years ago and i started the isolation quilt with it and then I went to the Janet Clare Ebb and Flow because they all went together, which we have got a tiny bit of the Ebb and Flow left. So um, it's on the website. Then Claire says, love that block in the fabric. I've joined later. What block is that? That first one, that was the very first one we did. That's the um, illusion block, the 3D illusion block. It was the literally the very first block we did um, on the on these lives, that one. Then Jane says, was an easy thread needle? Oh, easy thread needles. Um... I think we've got some in the shop actually so the eye um oh hang on let me let me draw on the back of something i need a bit of paper <laughs> need a bit of paper thank you linda um so what's that linda started really well ah oh, yeah so um an easy thread needle so if you imagine the eye right i'm gonna just draw near because it's it'll just wash away the eye of the needle josh if you go close to yeah. like that okay so if you imagine that's the needle like that with the eye of the needle instead of having to try and get the thread through there it's got a tiny it's got a gap here so they look like that and it's got a tiny little like spring thing there and you literally just put the thread across the top and snap it in so you haven't got to try and thread it through here they're really they're fab they're called easy thread needles um I know a lot of the girls use them. They're really, really good. You literally just put the thread across the top and snap it down, and rather than having to try and thread the needle. Uh, Carolyn says, what do you do with the thread? Stitch it in? Yes, I literally, that's all I do is now stitch it in. So I grab, I, know, I haven't got an easy thread here, typical. Have I not? No, I haven't. I would literally just stitch that, thread that, um, that needle, and then I would probably just go back one stitch and then bury it in there between the, into the wadding. Okay, obviously don't come out the back. That's it. Yeah. Uh, everyone's saying they learned a lot. Thank you. Good. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, I'm back tomorrow. I'm going to back, go back over the shop now because we're still open for another hour and uh, try and get some uh, samples made and bits and pieces because uh, got another chanter coming up really very quickly. It, it's amazing how quickly the month turns around. <laughs> um, so I'll be back tomorrow with some crochet and we're going to be making some paw prints, some crochet paw print coasters, which are really mega cute. Um, and then Wednesday we've got block of the week. So. Uh, uh, quick, yeah, another question. question. Uh, did Vanessa says, do you just cut it off at the end, the thread? The threads. The... Yeah. So I would bury it in, literally. So bury it in at least sort of two or three inches away um, until it comes out like that. I pull it slightly tight, snip it off, and then it'll just disappear back in inside. 
and that, that'll be fine. You can, in most machines have got a lock stitch, you know, they've got a little lock stitch and actually if you've got a lock stitch, you can just chop them off close. But you've got to make sure it's got a lock stitch, okay? Because that kind of does two or three stitches right on the very same spot, which creates a little knot tight, and then you can just snip them off. You don't even have to bury them then. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Claire says, thanks for putting my order so quickly. That's all right, lovely. Went in the post about, uh, well, just before I came on air. <laughs> Jenny, you're welcome. She said thanks to me. Uh, Vanessa says thanks. Cool, fabulous. Yes. Lovely, lovely. Right, I will. Any no, any, any questions there or not? Nikki All saying done. she will catch up later. Carol Brilliant. saying thank you. Okay, fabulous. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at one with some crochet. Okay, take care. Bye.